Welcome back to the food biotechnology course. This time I will talk enzymatic processes that are used for food manufacturing. So in the beginning I was talking about microorganisms that were transforming food and this time we will talk about the enzymatic processes. We have a huge variation in enzymatic processes. Dozens of enzymes can be used for food manufacturing and I will pick out a few of these enzymes and talk more in detail about these enzymes that are used for big processes that are very common to food manufacturing. So the first and the main enzymes that are used is, the, uh, hydro is for hydrolysis of starch. These are the amylases. Uh, we have been uh, talking about hydrolysis of uh, polysaccharides for the formation of monosaccharides or for desaccharides. Uh, they inversion of glucose to fructose or the conversion of glucose to fructose and also the production of fermentable carbohydrates that can be used for alcohol or for acetic acid production as I was talking about in the beginning of this series. Uh, another process is the selective hydrolysis of milk proteins especially for manufacturing of cheese and fruit juices uh, the fruit juice production can be supported by the use of pectinases to improve or to increase the productivity of the pressing process. What has to be said is that normally there are not enzymes used which are naturally extracted or naturally produced, but they are normally uh, produced with genetically modified organisms because of the higher intensity of the production and the higher volume that is available of these enzymes at lower cost. So GMOs are used for practically every enzyme that is used for food manufacturing. The biggest group of enzymes that we have for food production are the amylases and these enzymes can hydrolyze starch producing smaller saccharides, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides. So we have, for example, the alpha amylase that cleaves alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, which are present in starch. Or they can also, for example, the pululanase can uh, cleave alpha-1,6 linkages, which is some kind of branching in the starch. Or we have other enzymes that, uh, the beta amylase, for example, that cleaves uh, of maltose from starch or the gamma amylase. So different enzymes in combination, so different amylases in combination can be used to produce monosaccharides or disaccharides. Here is one of these processes uh, shown and this is the hydrolysis of starch and the, let's say the main product that is produced via this process is fructose and the fructose which is uh, derived from glucose and at the beginning we have starch, it is, let's say, one of these products is high fructose corn syrup. So the process starts with a slurry of starch and at high temperatures the uh, alpha amylases can cleave this or can hydrolyze this starch forming smaller molecules, let's say the maltodextrin, and the maltodextrin is further hydrolyzed using alpha amylase again and beta amylase producing a maltose syrup and the maltose syrup crystallized forms the maltose. Again, we can produce a maltodextrin directly from the maltodextrin syrup or we can produce maltose. From the maltodextrin syrup, the addition of other enzymes is necessary to get further products, the glucoamylase, the pululanase, and this produces glucose from maltodextrins or from maltose and the glucose syrup which is present after this hydrolysis can be transformed into glucose just by crystallization or glucose isomerase can be added and the fructose is formed at high concentrations. So it's not pure fructose but up to 70% around 50 to 70% fructose can be present and the product is called high fructose corn syrup and from this fructose can be crystallized. So with this very complex enzymatic process we have many different products 
uh, starting from glucose, maltose, dextrins, so oligosaccharides, and fructose. Another enzyme which is very common uh, is for the production of cheese, and we have, uh, let's say, the process is the enzymatic coagulation of milk, and this enzymatic coagulation is a two-step process. It's very important that in the first step of this process we have the enzyme which cleaves the milk proteins which contains the casein is cleaved into paracasein and the glycomacopeptide. And the paracasein in the second stage can form aggregates in the presence of calcium forming a very stable gel. And this gel can be further processed into cheese. So again, look, let's look at the first stage of this enzymatic process, and this is the cleavage of the casein at a very specific position. And this is at the phenylalanine at position 105 and the methionine at 106. So between these two amino acids, the casein is cleaved, and we have the formation of the paracasein, which can form the gel, and the glycomacropeptide, which is soluble in the way and is removed during the cheese manufacturing process. The next important uh, enzyme that we have are the pectinases and these pectinases can hydrolyze pectin. So pectin is present in fruits and it limits the extraction of fruit juice from the fruits during the pressing. So when we can remove the pectin or reduce the polymerization of the pectin, we decrease the viscosity and the filtration process becomes more efficient. So pectin is a very complex structure. It is a polymer of 1,4-alpha-linked galacturonic acid. And uh, if it is only the galacturonic acid, we have the homogalacturonan. In presence of other sugars, we have, a, for example, a desoxy sugar, the rhamnose. Then we have rhamnogalacturonan, also with arabinose, arabinogalacturonan, and these uh, galacturonans can be uh, substituted. They can be esterified with methanol. And depending on the structure, we have different stabilities in different environments, depending. Uh, so we can use the pectin for gelatinization, and depending on the structure of the pectin, sometimes cations are necessary, like calcium, magnesium, or if it is highly methylated, the gelatinization is also possible without uh, these cations in presence of high concentrations of sugars. Here the structure is shown uh, of the polygalacturonan, and we see it is alpha-1,4 linked, uh, and we have at carbon-6, we have the uh, carboxylic acid, and this carboxylic acid can be uh, esterified with methanol, so we have, depending on the amount, between 5 and even close to 100% methylation in the pectin. And if, for example, uh, rhamnose is integrated in the molecule, we don't have any more a linear molecule, but a disturbed structure, giving a little bit different uh, physical properties of the gel. Pectinases are normally produced from aspergillus niger for fruit processing. So practically every pectinase activity is available. So endo and exopolygalacturonase, pectin methyl esterase, arabinofuranositase, endoarabinase, and some more of these enzymes are produced and can be used for processing. We have to be very careful with the methyl esterase, because the methyl esterase liberates methanol, and methanol we know is toxic. And if this fruit juice containing methanol is distilled, the methanol can be enriched in the product, becoming very toxic. So especially when we use this pectinases for alcohol production, uh, we have to be careful during distillation that the methanol is removed during the distillation. So thank you for your attention, this time about enzymes and to have an overview what kind of enzymes can be used for food manufacturing. Thank you.